popular rail trail is shut down for several days. Coming up, we tell you why a path of trees and overgrowth along the trail is now gone. The sidewalk project in town comes to a halt. Just ahead, the DPW's plan to finally connect Hamden Road and Parker Street. And it's back to school for Isong Meadow students. We'll tell you how teachers and staff get ready for your kids. Just ahead on LCAT News Week in Review. Good evening, I'm Alexi Cohan. We begin tonight with construction along the popular East Long Meadow Rail Trail. That construction shut the trail down for several days, much to the disappointment of local residents. The Department of Public Works says it had to be done, but some residents are left wondering why so many trees and foliage are now gone. We talked to the DPW's Director of Operations to find out. If you've walked along the bike trail lately, you may have noticed some trees or brush cut down. DPW Director John Collins explains why this is taking place. Buckeye Pipeline has a transmission line that follows our bike trail from Denslow Road to North Main Street in East Long Meadow. It actually goes across North Main Street and into Springfield. They have a contractor in clearing the bike trail of brush and debris that may be growing over the pipeline so they have access to it in the event they need to effect a repair or maintain the pipeline itself. Colin says it's actually a plus to have the gas company do this maintenance. He says it's important to have clear access to the pipeline. Their pipes are in, they're clearing it in the, in, so they can locate it if they need to. If there's ever an issue, if there's ever a maintenance issue, or, or they need to affect a repair on it, there's a break of some sort that they'll be able to get at it uh, in the middle of the night they come out here. They have markers, but once the, the, once the brush grows in, the trees fill in, um, it's very difficult to see those at night. Although residents may be upset that the looks of the bike trail are slightly diminished, Collins says it's all simply overgrowth. Actually, everything they're clearing was cleared at one time. It's something that, it's, it's more of a maintenance thing that they're doing right now. They're cutting it back to the place that it was cut originally. Collins reminds residents that we need access to this pipeline as it pumps gasoline and heating oil. Buckeye Pipelines does have the right to come in and clear the line when needed. In other news tonight, an update now on the sidewalk project along Parker Street. The DPW has worked its way down Parker over the last few months. The goal is to connect Porter Road down Parker Street all the way to the existing sidewalks on Hampton Road. However, the project is now on hold. Once again, we talked to DPW's John Collins. The sidewalks on Parker Street are going to be put on hold. Hopefully we'll be able to get back later in the year. Um, we're going to have to go back out in the next few weeks to pave from the edge of the road up to the sidewalk in each driveway. Um, there's a little looming and seating to be done up to the point where we've stopped. Colin says the crew that works on the sidewalks will be redirected temporarily to a water main installation on Millbrook Drive. However, once that project is complete, he hopes to get back to work on the sidewalks. While some residents may not exactly be happy, Collins says because the town does not hire outside contractors, they're able to save residents a lot of money. The sidewalk job's taken a little longer than we anticipated, um, but it's at a great savings to the town, not having contractors do that work. Having us do it when we can get out there and spend the time to do it, it, it really saves a lot of money. The water main installation on Millbrook will begin within two weeks. Collins hopes to resume the sidewalk project later this fall. Another big story in town, school is now in session. The first week is a short one thanks to the Labor Day holiday. However, teachers and staff got a jump start on back to school long before the students stepped through the doors on Tuesday. Summer has officially ended and school is back in session for East Long Meadow students. Teachers and staff are ready too as they kicked off the year a day before the start of school with convocation. Welcome to the 2014-2015 school year and convocation assembly. As teachers took the day to prepare, East Long Meadow High School principal Gina Flanagan caught up with LCAT to talk about the start of another school year. We are just so excited to have the students back. It gets quiet here in the summer, so it's nice to have that organized chaos. Um, this year is really special because we're initiating our MacBook to all our staff, so we're doing a lot of training on that, and um, we've done some like minor room changes, some minor staff changes, but we're ready to go, and we're really excited about the first day of school. Flanagan has some goals lined up for this year. 
I'm hoping to see a lot more student engagement in the classrooms this year as the teachers try to help our students get acclimated to the use of technology. With the addition of new technology, East Long Meadow High School also has a new assistant principal. So our wonderful Mr. Kelly, you know, he always wanted to be a principal and he finally got the chance this summer and so he's moving on to Springfield to become a principal there. And so we did a search and we had a committee of, made up of all our staff, a couple students, a couple parents. And uh, Mr. Marhefka, who is our athletic director, um, really did a great job and he really seemed to be a good fit for our school. He did such a great job with his athletic director position that it only made sense to have him come here. And you know, we like to cultivate leadership within our own building, so we're really excited. Now the search is on for a new athletic director. Until one is hired, Mr. R.J. Marhefka will be handling some duties of his previous position as athletic director along with his new position as assistant principal. And I do have experience juggling both from, from my last position in Belchertown, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to, to helping the transition be as smooth as possible until somebody else, somebody new is on board. Marhefka is really looking forward to serving as assistant principal as it has been a goal of his for a long time. He'll have several duties on a daily basis. I'll uh, be helping out with day-to-day -day operations with, uh, with the principal and, and other assistant principal. Um, more specifically, I'll be overseeing um, facility, uh, facility issues, uh, all the special ed responsibilities. I'll also have um, just different curriculum and instruction responsibilities along the way. Marhefka is ready to start his new job at East Long Meadow High School. I taught, I was a classroom teacher for nine years and then served as a, a dean of students for two years. So I think it'll be really exciting to be back, you know, be back in the building first thing in the morning throughout the whole day and, and get to see all the students and staff uh, as we go through every day doing what we're supposed to be doing, teaching and learning. In sports news, practice for all fall Spartan sports is underway. While games may not begin until next week, teams are hard at work getting ready for their seasons. Fall sports at the high school include football, soccer, field hockey, golf, girls volleyball, and cross country. The JV and varsity girls on the field hockey teams are getting ready for their first game. The varsity schedule kicks off Saturday, August 28th at Southwick Tolland Regional High School at 9 a.m. Their home opener is September 2nd versus Central at 6.30 p.m. Girls Soccer has their first matchup on the EL Turf Wednesday, September 3rd at 6.30 when they face the always tough Belchertown team. Boys Soccer take the field Tuesday the 2nd at 4 p.m. versus the Bombers of Westfield High School. Their home opener is the following Thursday, September 4th against Cathedral High School. In golf, the team has a few matches under their belt already. However, their first home match at Elmcrest Country Club is September 4th at 3 p.m. versus South Hadley. Let's look at girls volleyball. Their first home matchup is against Aguam at 6 p.m. September 5th. Moving on the Friday night lights and the EL Spartan varsity football team. They take the field for the first time September 5th, but the game is away at South Hadley High School. Kickoff is 7 p.m. The very next Friday night, September 12th, the boys come home for the first time on EL turf. Game time, 7 p.m. against Amherst. Stay tuned to LCAT News as we follow Spartan sports each week with highlights and interviews. Good luck to all the Spartan athletes. Well, that'll do it for us tonight. Actually, this is my last broadcast for LCAT News. I've been working as an anchor and reporter for four years. Now I'm off to Hofstra University. I would especially like to thank Beth Ward and Don Mackey for giving me everything I need to continue my studies of journalism. The news will go on, but I'm saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Alexi Cohan. Good night.